Today we are looking at emitting a lot of sparks out of a few particles. So we'll be creating a small set of points that will emit a large number of new points. Let's get started. I'm going to open up a new shell, set my environment variables and launch Fusion. Uh, and what we want to try and do is emit a small number of points and have them spawn an additional number of particles. So we're going to do that by um, creating a p-emitter and a p-render. We're going to set the region to a rectangle, make it one by one, turn it 90 degrees, and we're going to put it slightly above the ground plane. Now these points here are going to be the one that are emitting a lot of sparks. So we want to make sure that we have a low count. So let's say we have something like 0.5 and they can only last for three seconds, uh, three frames, and with a variance of 1.5. So if you have a look at it now, we should see them all popping on and popping off. This is exactly what we want. So if we lay down another node called P spawn, this lets us spawn particles off of other particles. So if we just hit play now, you can see the particles are being born in the same position, and then they just stay there. So what we want to do is add a bit of velocity to uh, the points themselves. So this is on the p-spawn. So we want to add some variance. We want to add uh, an angle uh, up 90 degrees upwards, uh, probably even 80 degrees in, in, in all directions here. OK, that's actually looking pretty good for what we want to try and do. Um, the next thing is we want to make sure that they're falling down. So we need a bit of gravity with p-directional force. Uh, we're going to set this to something like 0.4 and what we have now is something being spawned and then it's falling rapidly and we need it to collide with the ground plane so we put down a p bounce node now the p bounce node you can go to the region setting set it to rectangle and make it considerably bigger something like 5 by 5 and rotate it 90 degrees down now we'll have all these points uh, colliding with the ground plane. They're a little bit too bouncy, so we're going to tone down the elasticity quite a bit. And one thing they're also doing is uh, they all have this sliding property to them. So they're going to need a bit of friction. So we do that with a P friction node. And if we have a look at this now, we can see that all the points are now being uh, um, emitted and then they lose velocity so they're no longer sliding. Okay that's pretty good. Uh, let's start looking at the sprite. We want to put down a fast noise node and uh, we're going to set it to 128 by 128, uh, have it a bit more detailed, have it animated, uh, put some contrast and the scale into it, connect a mask input so we can control the, uh, the shape of them and uh, if you're getting this effect where it's looking like it's changing resolution, it's because the auto proxy is on. So take that off and enable high quality. So you want a thin, long line. And like in the other video, you want to start with a long line. And you want to go 20 frames into your um, animation and make sure that it animates down to a single point. Now in the spline view, I'm just going to take this animation and smooth it off just a little bit, this animation on the width slider here. And we want to connect this to the newly spawned particles. We don't want them to have uh, any shape, like we don't want the original points to have any shape. So in the p-spawn node, you go to the style and change it to bitmap. Now we can connect our newly created um, animation here. And you can see that they're all have the same animation and then they just die. Uh, and what you want to do is change it to particle age. So now they all have their individual um, sort of timeline. And if you see this jerk that's happening here, that's probably just because I have an uh, invalidated cache here. So if you right click down here, you can say purge cache and that forces it to re simulate. Now the orientation is wrong with these, so you go to the controls, rotation, and change it to relative to motion and make sure you turn off the uh, always face camera. Okay, they, they might have a little bit too much of an um, upwards motion for me, so I'm going to go to the velocity and, and angle them even further down, so maybe 
have an even bigger spread on them, something like that. Okay, so let's go to the um, style settings, go to color controls, color over life. And they can start out white, but I want them to be yellow pretty quickly, and then orange, and then uh, quite dark red, and then at the very end I want them black. But in between, maybe we should have some variants where you know maybe it gets even white, and maybe even in here it gets a bit yellow again. Okay, I think maybe the lifespan of 100 frames is too much, so maybe they should have only something like 30 frames with the 15 frame variance. And you can see they're all they they all have unique distributions, but they're all of the same height. That's pretty much because these two parameters are limiting it, limiting it. So I suggest we go to the p emitter, go to the velocity, and we add random velocity to the original point, and we set the angle to be 90 degrees. Now some of them have very high speeds and some of them have much lower speeds and that's because the p-spawn has a slider called velocity transfer so you can transfer the velocity from each one of the original points onto the new one, newly spawned ones. Maybe we should actually uh, increase the friction just a little bit. And I think this looks pretty interesting. Uh, we should probably increase the amount of particles being born and uh, even adjust their size. We need more randomness to their size. Maybe even change their size based on the velocity. Uh, maybe let's not do that. Um, we can now create a camera and a merge node. Copy the point of view to the camera, put down a render node let's have a look at our um, image. Um, let's increase the resolution to something like 1280 by 720. Take the checkerboard image off and we're going to enable uh, accumulation effects and set the transparency sorting to z-buffer. That's a very very fast way of sorting transparency. It's not good if you have lots of thin smoke but in this case it should be fine. Uh, let's set the quality slider to something like 64 and turn down the amount of depth of field. Now this is really cool, this is 3D depth of field uh, running natively uh, on the GPU. So if you select the camera you can now change the focal, uh, the plane of focus interactively. So let's um, let's just increase the, uh, the gain a little bit on the image and um, let's increase the amount of points that are being emitted uh, on each one of these, um, uh, from each one of these points, and I think maybe we need to make this sprite a little bit thinner. It seems to be a little bit too thick. Okay, so that looks pretty interesting. Maybe we should just have uh, even more particles, and we go to the color corrector and maybe change the overall coloration to something a bit more sparky. And we'll even make the, the highlights, the midtones a little bit brighter and the highlights a little bit brighter. Uh, we'll put down a blur node, do a bit of blur, mix it back, do another one, do a really big one, do a really big one, and maybe even do another color corrector where we just pull some of that back out again, put some contrast into it. And uh, let's have a look at some of these other frames. Okay. Um, let's increase the amount of particles that we get. Uh, we can even make the, uh, the original distribution um, uh, or the object that we're emitting from a little bit bigger. So maybe even two by two. So some of them are reaching closer to the camera. Okay, so let's increase the uh, quality of the render to something like 256. And um, we're going to go to the highlight section. I, I don't like the fact that they're all yellow, so I think we might need to tone some of it down uh, and make some of them a bit more warm. 
So I think that looks quite interesting. So the difference between doing a bit of color correction is um, can do uh, wonders on your uh, um, renders. So let's do a preview on this. We've now created particles that are being born out of other particles. You can take this example a lot further by introducing things like puffs of smoke that would add to realism to a scene like this. As always, the file is in the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.